There are five really useful and underrated features that you may not be using. If you're one of those people who knows all about this, congratulations. But for the rest of us, let's dive right in. And we're gonna start with one of my favorites. Did you know that you can copy something on your phone and have it appear on your computer? Right in your Windows 10, go down to the search bar and then type in there clipboard settings and then click on that option when that pops up. And over here, you'll see an option called sync across devices. We wanna enable that. You're gonna to have to install the phone link app. And when you do that, let me show you what happens. So here's my clipboard. Currently, it's just got one thing in there. And on my left, I've got on my phone, I'm typing a message. So this is a test to see if it would copy to my computer. And now that I've typed the message, I'm going to highlight it all and I'm gonna click on the copy button. Once I've done that, you see nothing happens on the clipboard. But if I refresh the clipboard, ta-da, there it is. It just copied information from my phone, from my device to the computer. And speaking of copy and paste, stop using control C to copy and then control V to paste. So many people still don't know about this. So let's get back to the Windows search. And once again, we're gonna type there clipboard settings. And this time we're gonna to go to the top section where it says clipboard history. Save multiple items to the clipboard to use later. Let me show you how that actually works once it's enabled. Use the normal Control C to copy, and instead of Control V to paste, you're gonna use the Windows key plus the V. And here's what it looks like. So let's highlight the first word, go edit, copy. Of course, I can just go Control C. Let's do another one, edit, copy. And let's do one more. Okay, let's do a whole line, copy. All right, great. Now, if we press the Windows key and the V, all of those options that we've just copied comes up and I can simply click on each one of them and then paste it. Now, another really cool feature, if you use something often, like I often use my YouTube channel URL so I can actually paste it in various emails. So I can type it in there, press Control C, and then when I press the Windows key and V, that clipboard pops up, I can actually pin that. What does that mean? It means that no matter how many things I copy into my clipboard, when I press the Windows key and V, I see the clipboard, I press the three little dots and I say clear all, but whatever I have pinned simply remains. Right, moving along to a superb feature which for some reason is still turned off on so many people's computers. It's the one feature I always enable. Right, head now to your Windows search and type there storage. And you'll see at the top, storage settings. Click on that. When that pops up, right at the very top, you'll have something called Storage Sense. Storage Sense can automatically free up space by getting rid of files you don't need, like temporary files and content in your recycle bin. Now click on Configure Storage Sense, and here you have a bunch of options. So the first one is how often do you wanna run Storage Sense? Once a week, once a month, when you're running out of disk space? I like to run mine every single day. And under temporary file, you definitely want to enable that, delete those temporary files that are just taking up space. Now, when it comes to files in your recycle bin, well, you've got a choice. You can get rid of them after 60 days automatically or never get rid of them. I actually okay with leaving mine after 60 days, but the next one's important. Delete files in my download folders if they haven't been opened for more than one day, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days. This one, I always say never. A cleaner computer means less issues and less likelihood of something hiding in those temporary files that you're too scared to delete. And as you know, this is where malware routers often hide their viruses. And that leads us to a common question that I often get. What antivirus should I buy? Well, if you're gonna buy an antivirus, I personally use Trend Micro Premium Security Suites who are actually today's sponsor. I've been using them for years, way before they became a sponsor on my channel. Let me show you. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking that you only get your normal antivirus stuff, like a quick scan or a full scan with a whole bunch of stuff that you can configure. Yes, of course you get that. 
but you get so much more. Now, additional stuff that comes with it. PC health checkup. That's actually pretty rad. You press on start, it goes through your drive, and it gives you a detailed report of what is vulnerable, what needs to be fixed, and what has already been fixed. As I say, I run this software myself. Most of the stuff has already been taken care of. I love that they add additional functionality that we want, like removing duplicate data. Now, another option under privacy. Look at this. In the privacy scanner, avoid sharing too much personal information information it will check that for you it even even will check your social networking and i do like payguard now what payguard does is it gives you the option that every time you go to one of your banking sites it will actually open it up in this little window that has got a little blue line all the way around it and that means you're not signed in you don't have any chrome extension running this is a nice secure container so nothing can spy on you to get your personal information and speaking of personal information under the data tab you can actually protect certain folders so ransomware can't even attack that it's got secure erase there's a password manager and an ability to have a vault which means it will need a special permission to get into those particular folders if you've got kids parental control is right here as well now check this out i've just clicked on a phishing email link and look what happened it immediately blocks it when you do a search it even looks at individual links to say hey they are safe or not safe and it's all because of the Chrome extension, including an ad blocker. But wait, there is even more because you can protect 10 devices with this. So even if you're running Mac or Windows or Android or iOS or even Chrome, this is good for you. Link is in the description where you can use code LERON10 for a further discount. Okay, next up, this one has always confused me why it's not more popular. And when you see it, maybe you'll use it too. All right, so here I have my normal desktop. I've got a browser open. I've got WordPad open. I'm making some notes. And whilst I'm working, I maybe want to go check out some social media. So I open up a new tab. I go to my Twitter account and maybe I open up Notepad whilst I've got my WordPad open. Just like everything's all over the place. Here is what you can do. At the bottom, something called a task view. This allows you to create virtual desktop. So I create on new desktop and I go to the top of the second one and I click on that and then I'm going to give this one a name. I'm going to call this one my social media desktop and there it is a blank new desktop blank new canvas for me to do whatever I need to. In my case I'm going to use my social media desktop to have all my social media profiles open so I can go into them when I want to. Click on task view and I'm able to bounce straight back to my original desktop and here is where I'm going to have all my work stuff done. So virtual desktops allows you to bounce between your various desktop environment and get you really nice and focused without everything being all over the place. Now you can create as many desktops as you need to. So here let me create another one called gaming and then after I do that let's do another one and this time I'm going to call it communication because this is where I'm going to have my email so everything is nicely separated so let's open up communication and you can see blank screen I'm open up my mail in here and there is my email clients and maybe I don't want to have gaming so I simply click on the little x next to gaming and that desktop is completely gone and now I can bounce around between my work my social media and my communication each one has their own space and that is what's so so cool about these virtual desktops I can even take an app from one desktop and simply drag and drop it onto another desktop, moving it around. So I have full control of this. Now, let me show you a couple of quick shortcuts. If you press the Windows key and you press the tab, you no longer have to go down to the task view on the, on the taskbar. It will open up your desktop environment. So that's a nice little handy tool to have. But let me show you something even better. If you want to bounce around between your virtual desktop, what you can do is do the Windows key plus control and then the arrow keys left and right. And if you just hold those three combinations together, you can simply very quickly jump around between the desktop. Very cool. Now, since we are already logged into our Microsoft account, we might as well set up this amazing app. Right, go to the Windows search and type there sticky notes. Yes, the same type of post-it notes that we have glued to our monitor. We can now have it inside our computer. And what's really cool about this is that you're able to copy, obviously, and paste from applications and websites and blogs and whatever and have them. 
but it gets even better. Besides the color coding that you can allocate certain categories to be certain codes, check this out. If you go to the settings wheel, and at the top there, if you're logged into your Microsoft account, you're now able to synchronize the sticky notes on the one computer and another computer that you logged in at. And the changes will appear both ways. Very handy. And we know about this one irritation that's been around forever, but a simple toggle will make that entire irritation disappear for good. All right, so here I have an active window. That is my file explorer, happens to be the active one, which means it's the one that I'm working on. I open up Chrome, that becomes the active window. Then of course you can scroll up and down like you normally would. Go open up my file explorer again and that becomes the active window. But watch this, I, I want to scroll down on the blog whilst having my file explorer in front, I cannot. It's either one or the other. Unless you do this, go to your search, type their mouse, go to mouse settings, and then you'll see a little option at the bottom, scroll in active window when I hover over them. You want to make sure that that is on. Now watch this. My active window is my file explorer. If I hover over the inactive window and use the wheel scroll button, I can scroll up and down. Now that you've seen a thing or two that you could try, it's time to switch off a bunch of window settings that shouldn't have been on in that first place. Or check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here and let's get to a million subscribers. I appreciate you doing that. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you in this video or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.